What's good, good people? Welcome to Whole Views. Thank you for clicking the thumbnail. My name is Corey, and today we're talking about Ahsoka, episode six. So this is what I mean when I say certain episodes feel like filler, and then other episodes feel like things are actually happening. So last week's episode, episode five, we have Ahsoka, and we have a lot of what people are calling character development. Again, I stand by the fact that I feel like it felt like filler because the story that we are watching here in this series really didn't move much. Ahsoka just came back to the land of the living and I get it, you know, it was a big moment for our characters. It was a whole lot of fan service, seeing a bunch of imagery that you saw in Clone Wars, but now seeing it in live action, seeing a lot of characters return, all that stuff was cool, all that stuff was great. It was a beautiful cinematic episode. I'm not taking anything away from it. I thought it was nice, but I didn't think that it was the best thing that they had ever done. Here this week, we don't have a super stellar episode, but we do have things moving along and pieces moving into places where it feels as though we're going to see some characters turn in a way that I really didn't expect them to turn. But before jumping into all the things that I expect to happen or could possibly happen coming out of this episode, let's go ahead and start at the beginning where we have the space whales and we have Ahsoka and Huang and they are all in the whale and the whale is moving at light speed and transporting them where they want to go and you have that opening nod where we read the, 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 the crawl at the beginning of all the different Star Wars property and then Huang starts to speak and he starts out with the opening crawl that we all see on all the Star Wars stuff. That was probably one of the coolest moments of dialogue that you got in this series. For the rest of the episode, we spent a lot of time with Sabine and her captors. And one of the cooler things about Ahsoka as a show, and it was really highlighted in this episode, is that Ahsoka doesn't hang around all the familiar places that we see in the other Star Wars shows. Like there are no desert planets. We don't go to Tatooine and we don't go to Navarro, or I think that's the place where uh, we have the Mandalorian show taking place. We are in different locations and locations that are unique. The most unique feature about this one is how they approach the planet and it appears as though there are rings around the planet like Saturn, but no, it's space well bones. Super impressive the way that somebody thought that up to put that the whales come here on like a death migration and once they get here they die and their their remains just float in orbit around the planet that's crazy hell of a visual is probably gonna stick with me for a long time once on the planet you get more witches and i think they call it like dark magic and these witches are incredibly creepy uh I, it's borderline you know of what i'm willing to accept from a star wars show like i i normally don't play with magic and witches and stuff on shows like that that much but it's cool here i know that it all plays into the lore of like having the dark side of the force and the light side of the force and these you know good and evil fighting against each other I think it's all good so I was willing to go along with it and I want to see how far they take things with their little prophecy vision and but before we get into the prophecy vision of it all they admit and, and talk about Thrawn like he's here and then you get the reveal of live action Grand Admiral Thrawn now one of the things that I'm noticing you know I've seen images of Thrawn as a young character in the Clone Wars. And you know, we got young Ahsoka in the Clone Wars and she looks incredibly different in those versions of the show compared to what we see here. And I know time has passed and these characters have aged significantly. Thrawn looks old. He looks really, really aged and he doesn't look like he would be a physical formidable foe. But I do know tactically he is impressive and they've talked about him being this great adversary of Anakin and Ahsoka during the Clone Wars show. So I really want to see what can come of all his skill in this show where it doesn't seem as though there's going to be this huge battle. It's going to be something that's going to be more contained when Ahsoka actually shows up and, and Sabine and Ezra click up and kind of deal with the Thrawn issue. One of the things that was surprising about this week's episode is that Grand Admiral Thrawn actually honors Balin's deal with Sabine and actually allows her to go and pursue Ezra and she ends up actually finding Ezra. I'm such a conspiracy theorist that I always think that they are hiding the characters that are yet to be revealed and I thought it was going to be a bigger thing but it was still quite cool and very touching to see her actually accomplish the goal of finding Ezra and she finds him and reunites with him 
nice stuff that you got to do that. Glad that like Admiral Throne said, you didn't gamble the entire universe on or the entire galaxy on a hunch that your friend might be alive. I'll be honest, at this point, I have no idea what's actually going to happen in the coming episodes. Like, I do have a strong feeling that Ahsoka's gonna show up and that's gonna be some level of conflict that ensues, but I just don't know what's gonna happen and how things are gonna shake out. Actually, I was also thinking, like, Thrawn doesn't look like he's capable of going hand-to-hand -hand with any other Jedi people. So I'm really wondering, what is he going to do to be a factor in a fist to cuff between all these characters that have these Force powers and lightsabers and real training, and he just looks like an old dude who's really, really mean and blue. Like, I wanna see what he can do in, in that area of the physical combat. Like, how is he going to have presence in an actual battle? I do feel as though Balin is being set up to be kind of a traitor, and if not him, maybe his own little apprentice Padawan character, Shin, she might do something to where she flop sides or he flop sides. I don't know what's exactly going to happen with them, but they don't appear to be shaking out the way that I thought they were going to shake out. I thought that these two were henchmen that would be formidable foes for Ahsoka and Sabine and all their side of the fight. But at this point, it seems like he's pursuing something on his own and he's going after what he wants on his own and she, Shin, is right by his side. So I don't know how that thing's gonna shake out, but I do feel like it's gonna play out differently from them just being henchmen and fighting against the good guys. Like they might they might be wild cards and decide to do something totally different and pursue this, this other beginning as he calls it. We have two episodes remaining, episode seven and episode eight, and I'm just looking forward to seeing it. So subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see the breakdowns and, and hear the theories as to where I think things are gonna go. Uh, I'm really, really anticipating seeing this thing wrap up in a good way. And again, if they elect to do more stories of Ahsoka or if they choose to leave it as a series, I do feel like this is a good one. I don't feel bored with anything yet. I don't feel like this show is paced worse than anything that we've seen in the Star Wars universe. And honestly, if I'm ranking it at this point, it the landing does matter. But at this point, I would rate it better than the Book of Boba Fett, better than Obi-Wan at this point. Definitely better than those two. So I'm enjoying it and I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Let me know in the comments section. And that's all we have for today, y'all. Enjoy yourself, guard your heart, and go watch something good.